what I tell you, man, Flatty just smashes at Yankee Stadium. He's just the Yankee Stadium owner. He's like, Hal, give me the keys. This is my team now. Give me the keys, Hal. They're my keys. Exactly. My keys. Uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll give you a little prospect roundup. We'll talk about the wild card race. It's on Lockdown Blue Jays. It's right now. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Matt Bonaparte, Ben Shulman with you on Locked On Blue Jays. This is your Friday episode. Uh, thanks for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Um, Jays win. Big to little score. Uh, Barrios pitched well. He gave up yeah. those two runs early, but he, he pretty Only much won it in from there on. Only one earned, correct. Um, Yanks could never get the bats going against him. So good. Uh, Good on him. Six and two thirds, six hits, one run, one walk, nine Ks. Uh, and Anthony Bass comes in for an out to relieve him. You see Yusei Kikuchi out of the pen for the first time. He actually pitched well, gave up a hit, walked a guy, but did have two Ks. Uh, and Jordan Romano closes it out because he hasn't pitched in a little while. Good win for the Jays over a struggling Yanks team. Confirms that the Yankees are indeed not back uh, despite a Josh Donaldson grand slam walk-off home run last night, Jay say, no, I don't care. It doesn't matter. No one cares about it. Um, and Vladdy hits a big time nuke. He was my hype train. So that's big for my credibility. Uh, and I can't remember who my scary was. Oh, Oswaldo who went two for three. So, uh, I'm, I'm doing pretty well over here. I don't know about you. Not doing well uh, in terms of that. Uh, Bowen 0 for 4. Uh, and I mean, I'm happy if Marinaccio doesn't have to come into a game. So uh, he's my scary. He still is scary, but he didn't come. There are two, there were two things that are just like bouncing in my brain right now. Can I just get them out? Sure, man. One is the Yankees lose. And the yeah. other one is Guerrero says hasta luego. And the Blue Jays are up 5 nothing. All right, I'm done. Um, <laughs> that one came to me on the drive home from work today. Uh, um, I had to. I had to do it. I love right, you, John. Sure. Um, yeah, big win for the Jays. Because, um, I mean, for them, too, like, the Blue Jays are – I know they won this. I have not, like, declared them back. I mean, there's almost no point of doing that in a baseball season because you're going to have a rough patch again and you're probably going to have a good patch again. But, like, the Blue Jays still have to prove that they can – you know, win consistently down the stretch. Uh, but it's a good start. I mean, they just won 6-1. Now they win 9-2. Uh, and, you know, obviously a, a pretty tough opponent. George goes 5-for-5. Five five. <laughs> like, what? He was a menace. What? Uh, you know, probably in the ballpark, he's going to be hated most in the entire, uh, not just league, but all of the majors. Uh, and he shoves it right in their face with a double and four singles uh vladdy with the big homer Kurt, oh Bo went one for five so i'm doing a, a little okay um but you know what I, I liked how much production came from the top you know like the guys who were supposed to do it did it uh and sometimes that hasn't been the case this year but george with his five hits vladdy with the homer scored three times today um lord is like wasn't fantastic but he had a hit and a walk uh, Kirk had two hits, two RBIs. Teo had two hits, two RBIs. Uh, didn't get a lot from everyone under that, but that's why they're at the bottom of the order and not the top of the order. Um, so that's huge. And then on the Barrios token, kind of like declaring the team back, I think at least personally, I don't know how you feel, I'm, I'm done like declaring if Jose is good or bad based on every start we see. He's like, just Jose. Yeah, he's just like going to be good sometimes and probably really bad other times. But thankfully, at the exact right time that they needed him to be good, he was good. And, and you know, for a potential scenario, and we are not guaranteeing this team will get there, but if they are in the playoffs and you have to turn to him at some point, just remember that there is a chance that he can still be very good like he was tonight. So, 
Um, yeah, he was. He gives up to one earned, but whenever he's going well, he almost always gets to like six or seven. Six and two thirds today is huge. Nine uh, Ks because why not? Uh, both of us were calling snake oil on trading for Montas. Looks like we might be right uh, <laughs> because that's not going well. Um, <laughs> Domingo Herman starting a playoff game. Find out in a couple of no. Months. Who would, who would start <laughs> if not for let's say like let's say Montas pitched himself out of the top three? Sevy not be, well. Right? Sevy might come back. Oh, he might come back. That's the hope. Yeah. If Sevy didn't come back, well, it would be Domingo then. But I'm hoping Sevy okay. comes back. So that there is a world. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Okay. In the same world where Jordan Montgomery wouldn't have made the playoff roster, and now he's dealing. <laughs> Um, so I don't know. You, you're like, we can't hide it on these episodes. Bones is a Yankees fan, obviously. Um, but I think this gives us a very unique perspective because from a fan perspective, every time the team, you know, if, if we were looking at a fan perspective of the Jays, every time they win, we usually attribute it to them, them playing well. Every time they lose, we attribute it to them, them playing poorly. You rarely, I mean, it happens, but most baseball fans rarely say, you know, we did all we could. Like, you look at the mistakes your team made or you look at the triumphs. So, like, from the opposite side, how do you feel kind of about the Jays and their performance in the game? Well, I mean, they had a great game today. Uh, they've also had such a season in which the expectations have been so high from outside sources and everybody. Uh, and I thought for a while they did a pretty good job of kind of just shaking that off and saying we're going to play whatever and we know we're, who we are and whatnot. But I think the other thing you have to keep in mind is in a season where your manager gets fired halfway through, you're not expected to have success. Uh, and Schneider, I think, is well-liked in the clubhouse. Honestly, I'd say Schneider comes back next year. Um, I think I'll add wow. he's the coach next season. I think everybody likes him and they came up with him like the players know him. And if you have a coach who the players like, that's like 70 percent of the job. So uh, I, I but I mean, they're having a good season. And today they just pummeled the Yanks uh, in a game and they did their I mean, that's what they needed to do. The good teams, you have to beat the good teams and you have to beat the bad teams. And right now the Yanks are one of the bad ones. Uh, so beating up on them exactly what you had to do. You just have to hope uh, that pitching can continue to carry you through this series because eventually I feel like their bats wake up, but it's honestly one of those times in the season where it just feels like it never will happen. But then like in one week, they'll just hit like 25 home runs. Well, that's the thing with the Jays. I mean, for that's why we can't, you know, be aware of the sleeping giant that is the Yankees because the Jays until two games ago had scored like what over four runs in any game in August. So you never know uh, when that's going to wake up. And obviously, both of these teams have very talented offenses, uh, but both have been somewhat inconsistent. Um, sorry, I'm a little distracted. I got a, a text from my father, um, a picture of my brother and his wife with Alec Manoa, and I'm incredibly jealous. Like, <laughs> incredibly jealous. Yeah, if you were, the, the, before we wrap this up, if you were to – meet a single blue jay like alec manoa is i mean vladdy's one obviously i think alec mine's tay oscar really okay i, I like love tay oscar always have he's my guy i think alec is my two i think it's vladdy i'd like to meet alec okay so when i went to detroit to yeah. see the jays and i saw alec manoa for the first time that guy is huge like, he is the, one of the biggest humans I've ever seen. He could be in the NFL. Like, he's a massive human being. So big. Uh, so it would be interesting to meet him because I would probably look like a small human being. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all I got on this game. Um, Me too, man. When we come back, we're going to talk about the wild card race. This is true. Uh, all right. Let me tell you about uh bad stuff don't drink and drive people oh i'm that's not me never mind wrong one you shouldn't uh, do that but that's not what we're don't drink and drive that's bad don't do that but i'm going to tell you about other stuff that's not that did you guys know that the key to sustainable weight loss is through your liver 
The liver is the body's metabolic furnace. It's responsible for flushing out harmful toxins and igniting your fat-burning metabolism. But thanks to modern diets rich in unhealthy processed foods and constant exposure to thousands of man-made and environmental toxins, most of us have overworked livers. But now it's easy to rejuvenate your liver health and reignite your metabolism thanks to Liver Health Formula by Pure Health Research. Liver Health Formula contains eight liver-boosting super nutrients like turmeric, beet, and artichoke extract, all of which work together to, quote, wake up a sluggish liver and turn it in to a toxin-flushing and fat-burning machine. No more bloated belly, no more uncomfortable digestion, no more feeling tired and low energy all the time. Uh, and best of all, liver health formula makes it easier to maintain a healthy body weight long term. As a listener of our show, you can try liver health formula risk free today and get a bottle of free curb fit with your order. Curb fit you're asking, is a safe and all-natural appetite suppressant, making it easy to say no to naughty foods. This makes it the perfect complement to liver health formula. Go to getliverhelp.com slash MLB to learn more. Again, that's getliverhelp.com slash MLB to try liver health formula completely risk-free and claim your free bottle of curb fit with your order Go to getliverhelp.com slash MLB now to get started. Springer with a zinger. Oh, my God. That's a fifth hit in the um, Okay, I'm done. Uh, <laughs> so we had an idea. Mostly, I mean, I'm saying mine just because I don't know if it's a good idea. Um, not to, like, be selfish. I had an idea. Um, it feels like right now people are starting to look at the standings like intensely for a lot of the year we we peak we peer but we're always like there's games there's games there's games um i mean there definitely are still games but the blue jays have played 117 like we are 45 games away uh from getting to the promised land or being on the outside uh in terms of the blue jays so what i was thinking blue jays are in the wild card right now with the rays and the mariners obviously threats to them but at the same time they can all coexist in harmony in the playoffs so we are going to rank the biggest threats from the outside looking in and maybe we'll update this you know one jumps in and all of a sudden the Razor mariners jump out maybe there's a restructuring but the teams that we are looking at as legitimate contenders uh, are twins orioles white Sox, and guardians uh sorry red Sox, you got smashed act by the pirates today and that was about it for me considering you uh in the race and then they are five back but like for now i'm not gonna consider them maybe they jump in uh and guardians you might be like hey the guardians are leading their division but by a game so they could flip flop with the twins oh, or the white Sox are only two and a half back uh at any time so those are the four teams um if you're cool with it because we're kind of doing this a little on the fly Let's go back and forth, starting from four up until one. Um, okay. So out of those four teams, who do you have as the least threatening? Still a threat. They're all threats, but the least threatening. White Sox, man. I got okay. the White Sox at the bottom. I have no faith that Tony La Russa is going to lead anybody anywhere ever <laughs> again. Um, now, excuse me. You have to say again because he did a couple times. I just think about this. Tony La Russa had the perfect storybook ending to a career. He had won a World Series in the 80s uh, as the manager of the athletics. He works his way and builds up the Cardinals with really young players uh, and Yadier Molina and Albert Pujols, Adam Wainwright. Uh, grows them into great players. 2006, they win it all after going 83 and 78 in the regular season, arguably the worst team ever to win the World Series. Then in 2011, everybody knows it's Pujols' last year. You win the World Series and you retire. It's over. Then you, they put you in the Hall of Fame. Don't say anything else, Tony. Just let it be over. And he said, nah, I'm back in 2021. And he's just been painful to watch. Uh, the 77-year-old man is uh, running this team with great talent into the ground. Um, 
they don't scare me. I mean, they've got decent players. They have so much talent on their team, but like none of it is playing all that well. Like Jose Abreu is having a really good year, but only forty homers. Gilito and Cease are both really good. Or actually, no, Gilito's he, having a bad year. He's, he he's is really, really good. good. He's really good, but he is having like he's having almost the same year Barrios is. He got blown up. Yeah, he's having an right? awful year. He has a five. Cease ERA. is fantastic, though. Cease is amazing. Amazing. Kopech's great. Cueto's even good for them. Cueto's Hendrickson, like their Graveman, and Reynaldo Lopez are good in the pen, but their offense can't do anything. I have no faith that the Chicago White Sox will do anything. Um, do you agree with this statement? Regardless okay. of where you put them on the threat level, on paper, of the four teams we are considering, the White Sox are the most talented. Yes, I do. Okay. I'm going with the Minnesota Twins as my least threatening team. Um, I know they led the division for most of the year in the Central. I just don't believe in their pitching at all, you know? Uh, not to mention they're a classic, kind of like the Mariners, they're a classic, like, fumble it at the one-yard line team. Um, they just don't, like, Sonny Gray is having a good year. He has a 3.11 ERA. Joe Ryan barely has an ERA in the threes, and everyone else is in the fours. Like, their closer is... Who like Emilio Pagan has a four eight seven? No, it's nine, actually eight. it's, it's uh, Lopez now. Oh right, it's Lopez now. So that's better, and he's also not good. Um, that's better, but it's not like incredible. Like the Orioles are better. Bautista, I think, is better than Lopez. Um, so um, I, you know, I just I know that the Twins have found a way, you know, to pick up all these wins, and I want to give them and Rocco Baldelli a lot of credit. Um, but no one's like Byron's having a good year, but all things considered, like this was supposed to be like the Byron Bonanza. He's having a good year. He has 28 homers, which is really season. impressive. He doesn't hit for an average at all. Um, this is true. Luis Arias is their next best player. And then like Correa has been injured and has not been nearly, uh, Correa. I don't, I don't, didn't he already turn down his option? Like, I don't think he's going to go back. I think he's going to leave. I mean, even if he didn't, he's not. He's going to He's gonna opt out. Um, but I just, yeah, I don't believe in the pitching. We'd probably have to speed along a little bit. But um, that's why I have the Twins at four. Who's your number three? My number three is the Twins. So, okay. I mean, honestly, the Twins and White Sox are pretty close. Yeah. Um, but I put the White Sox below the Twins. My two is the Guardians. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, I was going to say my three. So I we forgot were, you didn't say your three. We're going back and forth. Never my mind. Three. You have no idea what my two is. <laughs> Could be the O's. My, uh, <laughs> sorry to the headphone listeners. Um, my, uh, my three is the White Sox. The reason I have them higher than the Twins, I, like, I just think they're more talented. And the difference is only a game and a half. So, like, if it clicks at any point in time, they all of a sudden go to the highest ceiling team of all of them, you know? Yeah. What's your, your two. two, man? <laughs> my two is also the guardians oh uh, look at that we're the guardians guardians are good uh they pitch really well uh if you said to me which of these teams do you not want to play in a playoff series it's easily the guardians uh the pitching is insane the pitching is insane i i'd rather play both the rays and mariners in a playoff series than have Ooh. to go up against <laughs> shane bieber tristan mckenzie and cal Quantrill. they're so good so good in a two out of three series in the first round. If you have to match up with that, that stinks. That's terrible. About, You're like a run. How about the year they're getting out of Andres Jimenez? Like, I think a lot of people immediately clown that trade uh, for Lindor, where they got Ahmed Rosario and Andres Jimenez, and like, oh, what a terrible trade. But like this year, that middle infield has been fantastic. I mean, Ahmed's Rosario's been a good he's, year. He's good. Like he's, he's having good. a good year. Yeah, for a guy who's a contact hitter, I mean, he's hitting 284, a 732 OPS, only eight homers, but like he's stolen 11 bases, and Jimenez is having a fantastic season. Yeah, um, war wise, he leads the team by almost a full point over Jose. Well, his his D war is like his, yes, his defense he's is fantastic. Such a good defender. Such yeah, a good like defender. he they lost Frank Frankie, but like I'm sorry, he doesn't like being called Frankie Francisco Lindor, but um. That, that middle infield stayed solid, and I think that Cleveland should take that as a total W. Um, yeah, I, I agree pretty much for all those reasons. 
Um, I know there's not that many left over, but I do like a team having a leader like Jose Ramirez, who's been there too. Um, and that guy's just an absolute stud. Um, they're, they DFA'd Franmil Reyes and got better. Shout-outs to Franmil, who's actually kind of doing it right now and uh, on the north side. Um, the O's are my one. They're your one, too. Um, the streaky factor of, like, they've just been so hot. And then, honestly, for me, the biggest thing that made them the biggest threat is the number of games they have against the Blue Jays and the way they've played That's them. So they can directly impact the Blue Jays in a way that no one else really can. Um, like if they take care of business against the Blue Jays, the Blue Jays will likely not make the playoffs. And that's just how it is. The O's, they just can't get by the O's. Like it's insane. They can't do it. Three it's, like, it's ridiculous. The O's are their kryptonite. And that's why they're so scary to me. Um, I just don't like every time they play the Orioles, I'm not, no part of me thinks it's a win. I don't care if Manoa's pitching. I don't care if Gosman's pitching. It doesn't matter. They still hit him. They, Ryan Mountcastle turns into Babe freaking Ruth and Austin Hayes, Lou Gehrig. So, like, it doesn't matter. They just – they're so darn good. Um, of the teams that we were discussing, the White Sox, the Orioles, uh, the Guardians, and the Twins, who do you guess has the best record versus above 500 baseball teams? Guardians. Correct. Let's go. Not above 500. None of them are above 500 against above 500 teams, but they're 32 and 33. Um, just I, I don't want to go back to the strength of schedule thing. I'm over it. The Blue Jays have by far this year played the least below 500 teams because at the beginning of the year, you know, when I was like, they played a horrific schedule. That was all because the O's were rated as a bad team at that point. And they had 15 games in the last two months against the O's. And that's just gone right out the window. <laughs> so yeah, totally. uh, it's going to be a gauntlet in this race. We are excited. Uh, and for future races, we're about to do a prospect roundup. But first, if you want to, you know, maybe look at some futures. What are the Jays going to do the rest of the season? Go to betonline.net, the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games find reviews and news of every league including major league baseball nfl nba nhl combat sports esports and even golf uh, bet online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live game from live in-game betting scores and podcasts they have you covered head to bet online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening right now bet online where the game starts Hey, we back. Roundup. Prospect roundup. Uh, we haven't done prospect roundup in a little bit. We apologize, but we're back on it. The Friday grind. Um, it's where Ben and I showcase three prospects each. At least one of them has to be outside the Jays' top 30 prospects, according to MLB.com. So let's get right into it. My first guy is one of the youngest players the Jays have, 18 years old, Drafted about a month ago, Tucker Toman, second round pick in the 2022 June amateur draft. Uh, he's a switch hitting shortstop and third baseman. He's played seven games thus far in rookie ball, uh, and the kid's hitting pretty darn well. Seven hits in seven games, three of them doubles. He's got three ribbies, six walks, and a 903 OPS in that time. Uh, he's also played some pretty darn good defense so far. So uh, it goes to Tucker Toman for me, my first one. Good to see him. Number, well already. number five Blue Jays prospect. Um, he was a guy that a lot of people think the Blue Jays stole. Um, we don't have to get into the whole minutia, but basically they were willing to overslot pay him in a way that some other teams weren't. So uh, excited for Tucker Toman. Generally uh, looked at as a huge hit in terms of a pick at that point. So, yeah, I like it. Uh, I'm going to go off the top 30 for my first one because my next two are on the top 30. Uh, so I'm going to go for a man out of Voorhees, New Jersey, drafted in 2017 in a round that no longer exists anymore, the 28th round out of high school. This is my guy, Davis Schneider, no relation to John. Um, he is a middle infielder at the double-A level. So 23 at double-A is pretty good. That's, that's you know, on the younger side. Um Having a good year in general, 
uh, like 785 OPS, pretty solid. Uh, earned a promotion midway through the year. That 785 OPS is with Double A. Started the year uh, really mashing at the high A level, and it's just getting better and better for him. Uh, in this month alone, in the month of August, uh, he has you know if you take away the first game, he has a hit in every game. He has a seven game hit streak going right now. Uh, with 10 hits over that stretch, 16 total bases, one of each extra base hit. Uh, his OPS is near 900 for the month. Uh, so just good to see. You know, you can never have too many guys up the middle that can swing the bat, uh, especially at a second base spot where, you know, frankly, if the Blue Jays could call someone up in the next couple of years, like I don't think, you know, we're like that spot's filled and there's no one to go there. You know, that's a spot with uh, potential for the Blue Jays to slide someone in. So uh second baseman davis schneider my first pick i like that from you davis schneids um my second one is center fielder right fielder uh third round pick back in 2019 who is number 30 on the top 30 to son brown he has been on prospect roundup before, but I thought I'd give him a shout because he's having a great, great August. Only one game in August without a hit. He's got 16 hits in 12 games, a homer, uh, four ribbies. He's playing pretty darn well. Uh, 320 average, 862 OPS in that time. But get this, a 517 BABIP, meaning that if he puts the ball in play over half the time, he gets a hit. I mean, that is fantastic. The dude has been an animal. So shout out to Son Brown for just tearing up the Tri-City Dust Devils and the Eugene Emeralds and the Everett Aqua Sox. That's one of the top names in uh, in minor league baseball. Aqua Sox is pretty darn good. Aqua Sox? Like, come on. Um, that's sick. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, always like an emerging guy, too. Right on the fringes of the top 30, getting on there at 20 years old. Impressive. Um, I'm going to go to another uh, top 30 guy now. Uh, I'm moving down a level from double A to high A, uh, where a guy recently just moved up. That's Gabriel Martinez, Venezuelan 20 year old outfielder who has risen a ton in the Jays' top 30. He's up to number nine on the Jays' top prospects. And he was, I, I don't remember, I think he was like in the 20s before. And that's with guys like Barreria and Tolman coming in as well. So that's really impressive to get all the way up to nine. Uh, he recently got his promotion because we've done Eden in the Florida State League, 831 OPS in 65 games, 11 dongs, 46 RBIs in 65 games. It's pretty impressive. Um, 288 hitter, like contact, walks up a little bit, has a lot of power. And then since he's been up at high A, he's been absolutely nasty. In eight games, he has 18 total bases. 18 total bases. For those who don't know, that's just, you know, doubles equal two, singles equal one. Uh, he has 10 hits in eight games, five of them doubles, one a homer. Uh, his OPS in that very brief span, I remind you, um, is above a thousand. He homered in his high A debut. He has had a hit in all but one game since, and he even had an RBI in his hitless game, so he stayed productive. Uh, Gabriel Martinez, I think, is a, a real exciting guy. You know, maybe a guy that could break spring training at double A next year uh, if this last month or so goes well at the high A level. And that would be very, very valuable as a 21 year old at that point. Yeah, last uh, couple of games, too, for the minor leaguers. So they're all trying to boost their stats as much as they possibly can. Maybe the minor league playoffs help that out. I don't know how well the uh, Jays affiliates are doing. We, uh, I'll check but, on that because, truthfully, I don't know. Basically, the way all these minor league seasons work except AAA is it's like the uh, it's like the lockout, like the 81 lockout, I think, um, where it's first half winner, like, and then they reset all the records, second yeah. half winner. That's your championship series, gotcha. basically, of the division. So they could be bad in one half and great in the other and make the playoffs. My third prospect is a guy who got called up to double A just a month ago. Um, made his first double A game debut on July 23rd and is now in double A. I'm talking about Zach Britton, not the one you're thinking Wait, of, but the that's one. Zach Britton? Nope, not that one. Mm -mm. Uh, he's been good. 
uh, in double A. He hasn't played in about a week, so I assume he might be injured right now. Yeah, he's on the seven day IL. Uh, but before he was there, he's pretty hitting pretty darn well. Eight games in double A, three homers, five ribbies, nine hits in those eight games, 10 runs scored. Uh, he's just hitting the cover off of the ball. He plays catcher, he plays outfield. Versatile guy. I assume he wouldn't play catcher if he ever did make it to the bigs just because there's enough of those. Some guy named Gabby's probably going to do that. Um, but yeah, Zach is my guy here. Britain is hitting, and the Blue Jay fans yes. are smitten. That's my last one. I promise. Uh, I know I said that last time, but I really promise. Uh, this is our last guy anyway. Uh, a newcomer to the top 30, uh, number 26 Blue Jays prospect, 19 year old shortstop. Estevan Machado, um, who is right now at the single A level with Dunedin, uh, lower than high A. There's a difference. Uh, he's been hot recently, but also just like love a guy who turns around a season midway, you know, who's not having the year he should have and turns it around. And if you go back to June 19th, he goes 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. At that point, he's hitting 235. With an OPS that's 611, and you're like, yuck, 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 what is that? Today, he has an OPS that's firmly in the sevens, and he's gone from 235 to 275. He has ripped off quite the second half, uh, including, you know, in his last six games, uh, he's collected eight hits, uh, one of which was a homer, one of which was a double. Um, Pretty young. I mean, maybe a guy that could get a, you know, a started high A next year. Uh, the numbers do need to get better. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but you like the finishing strong, I think. Uh, that's. I'm sure this second half is what got him into the top 30. Um, and, you know, I've never watched him. But if he can pick it and stay at short, then he could be valuable. Potentially. Uh, you know what else is valuable? PFS. This outro, he got you there. <laughs> That's all we got. Thanks for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen today. Go make your second one. The Locked On MLB podcast, Major League Baseball expert PFS, Paul Francis Sullivan Sully, brings humor, passion, unique perspectives on every team and the biggest stories around the league. Follow the number one daily league-wide podcast, Locked On MLB, on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Ben, or ben and I back on Monday. We will talk about the Yankees series and talk about the next one here as the season continues uh, to come to an end. We'll see you later. Peace.